I just want to share a little chapter in my life and I hit record and this is the chapter. So welcome to the page. I just want to have a brief conversation with you. I'm going to drop some gems, some knowledge, and then I'm going to be out of here. I got to do this video very fast because I have missionaries that are going to be pulling up to my house to edify me on God and pretty much what edify means. If I have questions or concerns or anything that I just don't understand or don't have the wherewithal, I just sit back like a student. I do believe in God fully. I feel like you are a fool if you don't believe in God. Just look at the complexity of this universe and everything that goes on. The way this world is going, once you see that there is truly evil, it will bring you closer to God. And that's what brought me to God in many circumstances, is just being caught up in the evil, being caught up in the sins. This world does belong to Satan. In the Bible, Jesus was tempted with all the riches in the world when he was in the desert. Satan said, you can have all the kingdoms on earth. So that being said, this world belongs to Satan. This world, if it belongs to Satan, expect it to have a lot of traps, pitfalls, promoting evil, promoting things that ain't right. Just expect there to be a lot of evil. And that's what pushed me closer to God. Started with the big sins. One of the hardest ones I had to tackle was lust. I feel like a lot of men were blind in our eyes and we chase after a chick based off her appearance. It is completely the wrong chick for you. Look again. In the Bible it says this chick will lure you in her house, but you are a fool if you follow. Lust will destroy your clarity, take you from your purpose. I was in so many moments in my life where it felt like my heart was bleeding and everything was going wrong and I felt so spiritually depleted and ruined and I felt so confused and so many emotions. I felt trapped. I felt chained. I felt weak. I felt so many things that just didn't feel proper and I felt scripture by scripture that I applied to my life. It started off, I'm pretty sure, with lust. In the Bible, it it warns you about that and it shows you the precautions. I read some scriptures about it and I applied it and I noticed my life got better. I got stronger. I got wise. I had more discernment for the people that I was bringing into my life, the females or just anybody in general. And I got smarter. I got wiser. So I stopped doing that and I realized I'm not distracted by something that literally distracts 90% of men and takes them off their purpose. Brings them through divorces. The woman will take half or just bringing them with the wrong chick to where she will cheat on him. Moral compass is completely broken and People just don't respect one another and if they're not fulfilled in a split second or if things happen to go down for a little bit, they'll turn their back and they'll try to find another partner. A lot of things wrong with people in this world. And I realized that many, many times by falling into other sins, it started with lust. I'm like, okay, the Bible helped me with that. Cool. And then it started with another sin that popped up and another sin that popped up. And sins are pretty much things that kill your spirit and weaken you and dampen you and chain you and just make you weak, depressed, give you anxiety, give you a whole bunch of things that just don't benefit your spirit or strengthen your spirit. So that happened multiple times and scripture by scripture I noticed I was getting my strength, my resilience, my confidence and all that back and I felt more tapped into my purpose. That's what the Bible is. It's like a handbook to spiritually make you strong and make you whole and reignite yourself with who you were meant to be. So the missionaries are coming here. I don't know how this synced up or how this happened but I was in this city. Well first and foremost I was at a Starbucks. I was pissing in the bathroom. I was praying to God. I came out to a table. It seemed like a missionary book with some guy sitting there and I'm like hey I just prayed, like I speak to God all the time. I wasn't too big on the Bible, so I always wanted to get into it, and I seen that it was a different Bible, so I'm like, hey, what is this? And he said, blah, 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 it's this and that, and I got missionaries who are going to be pulling up, and they're going to be talking about God, you want to stay here? So I said, yes. So I got one of their books. Before I went back to my town, the next day I found another Bible in the back alley. I found this in the back alley. Like, look how fresh this is. You can see by the name, this does not belong to me. It does now. But I found that the next day, and those missionaries linked me with missionaries where I'm from. But when it comes to the church scene, I do believe in God, but I realize the Christians nowadays, they do what's right, what goes with society, and they'll turn a blind eye to the Bible and not fully stand on it ten toes down. So I feel like church is a good place to go, but it's not the end-all, be-all. If you believe in God, just walk with God, just build your connection with God. Don't get roped into anything that doesn't feel right. But I ask the questions, they answer them, they feed me knowledge and wisdom, and I just be quiet, and I listen, and I absorb like a student. So I just want to talk about how I can fix you, and the renewal of your mind and how important that is in this day and age because there is an attack on all sides on your spirit on your mind on your physical look at 99.9% .9 of this world everybody is down and no everybody has anxiety everybody is depressed everybody is angry everybody is envious everybody is cheating every like there's so many things that is so corrupt with literally every individual they're envious when you succeed they want to take you out there's a lot wrong with this world it happens to do with the mind and the Bible is called the renewal of the mind and it's one of the promises of God that he does to his people and the renewal of the mind is making you whole again, giving you your strength back and one of the ways you can do this is actually taking
taking care of your mental faculty and not polluting it with trash. Be conscious of the stuff that you are feeding into your psyche on a day-to-day -day basis. What are you watching? What are you listening to? Are you feeding into this matrix agenda? Why do you have doubt? Why do you have limitations? Why do you have a lack mindset? Why do you have all these pollutions in your mind? And it's because you have been programmed that way. If I constantly was with you on a day-to-day -day basis saying, you are great, you are amazing, you are amazing. Since you were a child, you are the greatest, you are the best, you would believe that. That's the only thought that you would hold in your mind because that is the only thing that you were told. That is programming. And when you watch the bullshit news, fear, death, 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 trauma, you may think you're just watching news. Your subconscious is picking that up. That fear will leak into your life. Whether you're taking risks or you're chasing dreams or you're trying to move up at a job, that fear will subconsciously take over to where you take a step back and you kind of conform and you're kind of hesitant to make the next move. That's just one of the ways and it all compounds. Like the music that is being listened to, it's all about killing, it's all about drugs, it's all about depression, it's all about anxiety. It's literally programming. Just with the degeneracy and the way this world is going, Ten Commandments are like things that you would, two years ago, you'd be like, no one would do that. Thou shall not kill. The promotion in the music and the constant programming on a day-to-day -day basis, I won't be surprised in like 10 years when that stuff is actually happening. When everyone is just egotistical, they want to step on another, um, they want to move up, they idolize money and everything is just shot. There's no morals and people are just going gung-ho, living off the flesh. And the flesh is like the physical, it's not the spirit, it's like the temptation. So when you live in your flesh in the Bible, it means you live by your senses, you live by your temptations, you don't live by your spirit. Your body is in control of your spirit. Lust, you're not in control of yourself, you watch porn, you follow this girl around, you simply are not walking in your purpose, you can't hold your own, you can't hold your ground, you can't stand on a rock and be firm. You're constantly just wavering around in the wind like a feather with no direction. And that's what happens when you lean into the flesh or you live like that, whether it's desire, any temptation, any sin, gluttony, overeating, things like of that nature. Renewal of the mind is very important because you are being attacked on every single side. You have to protect your mind. You have to watch what you feed your mind on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't want to become like the 99%. You have to truly make an effort to water the garden inside of your mind, pluck the weeds and nurture it and add nutrients. These lack mindsets and these limitations, these doubts and these fears and these insecurities and these anxieties have all been programmed. You have an undisciplined mind. You don't care what you watch. You don't care what you see. You have a lousy, undisciplined mind. You need to be a selective listener, whether it's to the people in your environment, whether it's the stuff that is on your phone, the media, the programming. You have to be selective because you need your strength in this world. You need a backbone in this world to fulfill your purpose. You won't get there by being weak, being unique or going against the grain. A lot of people are like, oh, that must be fun, but it takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of resilience and you will never tap into your purpose or have enough courage or enough strength to walk that path if you aren't spiritually strong. So one of the things I want you to do, I want you to build yourself up spiritually and mentally, whether it's with books, meditations, affirmations, constantly just fill your mind with the seeds that it needs to grow. You want to be an optimized individual. You want your mind to be sharp. You want your body to be sharp by feeding it the proper things that it needs to function. That's the reason you have negative thoughts is because you're undisciplined with what you are feeding your mind, who you allow in your environment. You need to have discernment for the spirits that you are allowing in your vicinity that you are talking to. Like even if it is family, you have to have discernment for the people that you are allowing in your mental wheelhouse. You got to be building yourself up. You got to be building the people around you up. And that's how you develop true strength. So when you go out into the world, you're not entering the world with a weak mindset. You're not going to get anywhere in the world with a weak mindset surrounded by weak mindsets. You need a strong mindset because those weak mindsets will try to suppress a strong mindset because they feel insecure and comfortable with where they are at. They don't want to change. They don't want to grow. They don't want to fix themselves. So in return, they will try to dampen that light. They will try to ruin what that person has got going on. Get those people out of your circle. Clean your circle up. Make sure you're allowing in good people. Don't have people in just because you're feeling some type of way. You're feeling lonely. If you're feeling lonely, go and connect with God. Go and connect with the true creator and build a relationship with him and build yourself up. Once you build yourself up, make sure you have people around you who build you up in return. Because if you're the only one who's doing this work and nobody around you is doing this
this work, like I said, they will be comfortable where they are at. And if you're not with people who are above you or who are more successful or who are doing better or who have more knowledge or wisdom or want to take you to that next level, if you're not around people like that, you will slowly pick up on these people's bad habits. They will slowly chink your armor. So either you need to be alone or you need to be around people who are mentally conscious and who take care of their minds and take care of their spirit and who are morally correct, who are going to treat you right, who are going to help you grow in all aspects and who are going to push you to that next level, who inspire you, who motivate you, who you can learn off of, who you can be a student of. And that's how you're going to go to the next level. And you constantly want to be around those people. Because like I said, even if these people are nice and they have an undisciplined, a lousy mindset and they don't want to put in the work, they don't want to grow mentally and you're putting in all the work, once you rise up, they're going to have the crab in the bucket mentality. If they don't want to change, if they don't want to grow, it doesn't matter how nice they are, how kind they are, they will always try to suppress or try to attack what you got going on because they don't want to change. They're comfortable with where they are at. So they will try to take what you've got going on and they will try to ruin it so they can feel good about themselves. Don't change yourself or your environment. Change your environment to fit yourself. Stay true to who you are and the right people who are meant for you and your path and your purpose will align if you stay true to yourself. You want your environment to fit you. You don't want to change yourself to fit your environment because you will forever be miserable. So if you have to walk alone for a little bit just to get to that place, that is fine. But you're never walking alone. You're walking with God.